All right, uh, let's try and take a look at chapter four and see what um, see if we can make any sense of it. So we have a flow process that's used to split a mixture of carbon monoxide and ethane into two streams B and C. Information about the inlet and outlet streams are shown in the table below. And we're asked to fill out the table and calculate the entropy change uh, for this process. Okay, so essentially, let's just look at filling out the table. Reference dates, ideal gas state at 50 bars and 25 degrees C, and we're given values of our ideal gas heat capacities. All right, well, let's see what we can do. Um, let's start with um, row one right up here and try and get those molar flow rates. Okay, so um, if we let CO be, say, component one, okay, so CA, CO will let be component one, and then um, ethane be component two. So if we just look at calculating these molar flow rates, essentially we just have a split. Okay, so coming in, um, let's just use a Y1 um, and stream one is 0.5. Okay, and the flow rate is, so say F1 is 100. Okay, and it's moles per second, but uh, the units don't matter so much. Okay, so I'm going to get a splitter, um, and actually I should call this stream A, right? So Y1 and A is 0.5, FA is 100, uh, so molar flow rate Y1 and stream B is 0.1. Uh, then FB is unknown, uh, Y1 in stream C is 0.9, and FC is unknown. Okay, so we have two unknowns, but I can write down a total uh, mass balance, a component mass balance, right? So total mass balance, FA is going to be FB plus FC. My component mass balance, uh, Y1A, is equal to Y1B, well, okay, Y1A times FA is equal to Y1B FB plus Y1C FC, All right? So first thing I see is I have two equations with two unknowns, and so I can solve for FB and FC, okay? Got that, that part's good, okay? But now let's look at this. So first we're gonna have the pure component, um, molar entropy of component one and component two uh, in an ideal gas uh, in outlet streams A, B, and C, All right? And in all, we're adopting a reference date of an ideal gas at 50 bars and 25 degrees C. Okay, now let's look at this for a second. Okay, so we're gonna have ideal gas at 50 bar and 25 degrees C. Okay, and so what that's gonna correspond to is, <coughs> um, just like we saw um, when calculating property changes upon mixing for an ideal gas, is recall from chapter five that we would have that um, the differential of the molar entropy of component I Right, uh, in an ideal gas state, would be CP of component I in an, uh, of an ideal gas uh, over T dt uh, minus. Right, that was a mistake I made before. Minus R over P dp. Okay, and so um, you know, just in general, then you know, SI of an ideal gas at uh, some T1 and T2 or T1 and P1. Minus SI in an ideal gas at some T2 and P2, okay, would just be equal to, well, we're given just constant values for heat capacity, so we can assume that's constant, okay, and so 1 over T dt, this would just be log uh, T1 over T2 minus R log P1 over P2. Okay, and so where the reference state business comes in is, you know, we'll just take state two to essentially be um, R zero, right? So we say that, you know, reference state, we take our ideal gas entropy to be zero. So if I want the ideal gas entropy of, you know, component I at a given temperature and pressure, uh, I just plug in for T2 and P2, uh, the values of my reference, my reference state, all right? And so I could use this expression to calculate the ideal gas uh, entropy of component one and component two in streams A, B, and C.
Okay. Again, all I would do is we're given the ideal gas heat capacities. Okay. For both states, we're told that uh, you know essentially P2, my reference state pressure is 50 bars, reference state temperature is 25 degrees C. So P2 would be 50 bars. Now for temperature, remember this is a temperature ratio, so I would use absolute values. So for T2, it would be 273.15 plus 25 degrees C, right, to get the temperature in Kelvin. And then I would just plug in uh, the temperature uh, and pressure of uh, my state of interest. Again, using absolute units of for temperature. Okay, And when I look at even just dreams, or this would be A and C, they're at the same temperature, 25 degrees C, so that term just goes away. Right? It could be a log of 1, which is 0, and so I'm just dealing with the, the pressure dependence. Okay, cool. Okay, um, so it looks like I accidentally scribbled on P down here, right? but that's P2. Okay, cool. Okay, so that'll allow me to get those um, ideal gas values. Okay, then the other thing that's interesting is we're given the residual value. Okay, and you know why we're given the residual value is remember residual. Okay, SR. Okay, is just actual relative to that of an ideal gas. Okay, so the idea would be that if on the last row, if I want to calculate the entropy of my mixture, okay, the entropy of my mixture then would just be equal to the ideal gas value plus the residual value. Okay, so now we're given the residual value. So the question is, can I get uh, the ideal gas entropy of my mixture? Okay, well, SIG is just going to be equal to what? SIG would just be, what is it? Sum over I, YI, SI, IG, right? Molar average of the pure component, um, molar entropies, plus delta S of mixing, right? Again, for an ideal gas, okay? Where delta S of mixing, ah, delta S of mixing for my ideal gas uh, was just our negative R sum over I, YI, log YI. Okay, so I know the mole fractions of both components in streams A, B, and C. Okay, um, and so I could use that to calculate uh, delta S of mixing. Okay, for streams A, B, and C. Okay, so I would have one of these for streams A, B, and C. Right, I know the composition of component one and component two. Okay, then once I have delta S of mixing of that ideal gas for streams A, B, and C, I know. We just calculated a, a here, right? So you know, a reference state is by definition zero. So we're told our ideal gas, or reference state is an ideal gas uh, at that given temperature and pressure, and so that allows us to calculate essentially an absolute value of um, the entropy of uh, component I uh, in state um, streams A, B, and C. And so what I could do then is I could use that to calculate essentially an act, absolute ideal gas entropy of streams A, B, and C. Okay. Then once I had that, and I know the residual, or I'm given the residual entropy of streams A, B, and C, I could use that to calculate S. All right. So I could calculate S then. Right. I know. Let me see. I know this. All right. So then I could calculate S. Okay. Then uh, in terms of um, the last part, calculate the change in entropy. Um, I mean, the way I guess the only way I could see interpreting it as um, you know, what's the change in entropy for, you know, this, this given process, right? And, um, and so, you know, I could calculate the molar entropy going in, and I could calculate the molar entropy of those, well, not molar, uh, absolute, well, not the extensive, right? Extensive entropy going in would just be um, N, or in this case, the molar flow rate, right? So N dot uh, times S A, uh, coming out in B would be, you know, say N dot B or FB times um, SB, and what's coming out in C would be FC, you know, the molar flow rate, total molar flow rate of stream C uh, times SC, right? And so then I could take, say, the difference in um, SA minus, so SA, the extensive entropy of stream A minus uh, the sum of B and C. Right, and calculate what that difference is. Okay, so cool. And actually, I guess it'd be you know sum of 
SB plus SC minus SA, right? And those would all be extensive, would give me the change in uh, the entropy for that process, right? Cool, right? And hopefully it increases.